Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the stream. Hope you're having a good day today. Hey, Nervin. Good morning to you. How is it going? Hey, Schmilicopter. Good morning to you as well. How is your morning? Taking it slow, getting ready for the day. Good. <laughs> All right. Good morning, Solar Fun. How are you doing? Today, um, as <laughs> My god, my voice is shaky for some reason. I think I overslept my alarm clock. That's why I sound so weird. But <clears throat> I will try to speak up so it doesn't sound as wobbly. But today, as you maybe remember from the last time, I thought maybe we can draw a cyberpunk vending machine from the challenge in aquatic moon um, concept art mm, how would you call it I know. discord community and there is a challenge they post a challenge every month uh, some last month it was a character design challenge for a specific kind of style Another time it was a redesign for the shrines from Zelda Breath of the Wild. And this month it's Cyberpunk Futuristic Vending Machine because I guess Cyberpunk is being released the game soon at some point maybe. So the idea is basically, oh you can also type exclamation mark um, topic then you will get the topic and the link to this message in their discord channel if you want to join along and read the whole thing basically the <coughs> uh, the challenge is to design a cyberpunk futuristic vending machine it should be food and drink related can be you know like neon glowy colors robots tags all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Nervin, for the topic. Exactly. And then he also mentions like when you're designing a vending machine, think about how it could be used with, uh, like how how do you order there? Basically, is there a menu? Can you use your I don't know futuristic credits or bits or I don't know Bitcoin? Do you scan it? Do you put the card in? that kind of stuff. He also suggests to kind of suggest the function of the vending machine from its shape or like design. So for example, like this is a donut machine. Yeah, they he gives some other examples. But the that's the idea. How are you all doing? Shmelicopter already said that she's doing good. She didn't say how good. <laughs> but I'm getting, I'm kind of doing slow today, I think. Still trying to wake up my brain a little bit. But here, let's start with, I guess, searching for some cyberpunk or maybe some vending machines. So basically we need two things. We need, I actually already made a color palette for cyberpunk. Uh, here, I can share this cyberpunk color palette if you want to. I basically just looked around cyberpunk stuff. 
and pick the this bright yellows, pinks, blues. Like I think that's kind of the the whole idea of cyberpunk. There is even cyberpunk Starbucks there. <laughs> Coffee to wake up. Coffee is a good idea. I didn't have time really to prepare coffee so I just put some hot water in yesterday's coffee but I guess it will do for now all right let's share this thing maybe I'll share it can I share it to discord or no Stream art share. For procreate. All right. I think maybe it's posted there. Let's check. Yeah, so, all right. Cyberpunk and futuristic don't match in my head. Cyberpunk's a bit retro. Yeah, I think what he meant in the challenge with like cyberpunk futuristic stuff is like cyberpunk, since it's cyber, it's kinda in the future. It's, a, it's an interesting style, I think. It's kind of retro, but also kind of not, because all these technological like systems that are always present in the cyberpunk worlds, like the, I don't know, all the credits and technology and stuff, it doesn't exist yet. So it would make sense to think that it's in the future. But it looks kind of like retro synth, wave kind of style I agree on that that will be an unusual color palette for you I'm curious to see I'm also curious uh, but it seems to be fitting the style let's search for vending machines just for some inspiration Also, if you want um, the access to the references, you can just type exclamation mark refs and you will get the link to the Pinterest board where I save all this stuff. And also apparently you can just open the website with the image and kind of just drag and drop it into procreate to create some sort of reference board let's drop a couple of those let's find some maybe retro style vending machines that's a cool one or like these ball machines What's your weirdest experience with a vending machine? I like the palette. Uh, interesting colors and super bright. Not sure I would be able to use them. I like natural colors. I also like natural colors mostly. But, you know, when the style calls. This is a chocolate vending machine first of all let's kind of brainstorm what 
the vending machine can give people. Since it's futuristic, what kind of food would be there? <laughs> Not giving me the sneakers I wanted was the worst experience in vending machines. We also had those vending machines in university where you sometimes try to get stuff, but it just doesn't give you. And then you're stuck and usually because it's university and people are wild there, you can just like as two people shake the vending machine a little bit. <coughs> And it will give you what it owes you. But let's think a little bit about food. Like this, this part. Food and drinks. I got two sneakers once. <laughs> I wanted the Kit Kat. Well, I would argue that is two sneakers is better than a Kit Kat. Food and drinks. It can give like snacks. Maybe some it is futuristic, so maybe it's like bugs. Or maybe like uh, energy drinks. What else will people need in the future? Except <laughs> not only snacks and energy drinks. Nervin says, oh, and on the airport in Tallinn, everything was in Estonian and I didn't get how to use the machine. And as it turned out, it won't take credit cards. Then I had to buy overly expensive th snacks in a kiosk thing. So weird that in airport, first of all, everything is in Estonian and second is that it doesn't take credit cards. Noodles, that's another futuristic thing. Maybe some kind of like protein bars. I also think that maybe a kind of technologically advanced vending machine would know what you know, what you <laughs> would know what you know, would know what you want. So basically, as soon as you enter your card there to get credits or to to purchase the thing, it will scan some kind of chips. <laughs> scan the chips and customize the results to your personal taste. Maybe like soups is a good idea, Nervin. Or fruits. Maybe fruit, like weird fruit juices. And that could be fun because it's it can be like a bright, colorful thing. Astronaut food snack bars. Yeah, I think we have a good selection. Let's just move this to the side a little bit. Remove the brief. These guys can stay for a while. smoothies yeah kind of like personal smoothie machine let's start simple it 
needs some sort of way to show you what it has. So let's say if it's like a fruit machine, then it maybe would have like compartments with different fruits. Just piles of fruits. Are those emojis visible? Uh, yes, actually. I see all of them. <laughs> this is a very futuristic vending machine, just a fridge. So then it kind of, maybe there is like a water tank or something like that and some kind of pipes going everywhere. And here would be like a chamber where you get your drinks. Something like Experimenting. Yeah, I keep experimenting, it's okay. Maybe something like this, maybe here are some bananas, some weird fruits everywhere. But maybe we can make it even more futuristic. Maybe it should have like a weird silhouette. Let's try starting with a silhouette. Could be one with this ball on top. Maybe there can be like a tiered vending machine with different levels of some sorts. This this one the Oops. The ball one can also be levitating. Maybe it has like a little jet jetpack, like a little engine at the bottom. Can be like a can be even sort of like a car or a standalone, a one shot for vaccines, <laughs> not food exactly. Maybe it can be like vaccinated food that you, like you get drugs there or like the medicine that you need for the post apocalyptic world but it's in the shape or in the form or taste of a uh, kind of fruit or protein bar. Spam. Yeah. Spam bent. We only have a few viewers. Why did they come here for spamming? Go spam on the big channels. I mean, don't spam at all. <laughs> Wait. All right, so we can now kind of draw on top of it with a darker color, some more details. So maybe this one has like a big 
screen in the front and like a pads here for entering some numbers and stuff and here can be like a menu and here is where you get your shot or your drink vaccine shot wait <laughs> just spamming big channels so i get to enter it no I mean, I did say that, but okay, let's move on. Anyway, here can be like an aquarium with octopuses because maybe they use octopus ink for this. And also cyberpunk is famous for having like ads and banners everywhere so maybe we'll add like a some kind of banner on the side maybe this if it's a juicing machine maybe this can be like a in the shape of a bottle a little bit with this straw sticking out Something like that, maybe. What about this one, though? Schmilicopter, are you gonna draw a cyberpunk vending machine? Never seen you draw anything futuristic or sci-fi, I think. I'm, I know you're not a big fan of it, maybe? But I would be really curious to see what you would do. This one, on the other hand, can be more like this can be the chamber where everything is processed. So you have your bottle here or like your snack bar, snack being created here. And this can be like an ad or a menu or something. This can be like a payment platform. Something like this maybe. This can be also an ad. And then here you have some sort of like a, like a 3D printer or some kind of like a, I don't know, brewing device. This one will be like snacks. What can this one be? The circular one. Maybe it's maybe it's just like a bowl of soup. Like there is just soup inside with some things floating in it. And it's just like a floating drone that can pour you some soup. Vaccine, wait, one, sh one slot for vaccines. One, I read it at first, one shot of vaccines. And if you think about it, uh, one vaccine shot can be like a little tequila glass with vaccines. Yeah, I don't know. It's not that I don't like it, but just don't feel like drawing. 
Ah. Well, if you don't feel like drawing, then don't draw. <laughs> it's okay. Or maybe this this robot has to have like a like a face projected around this thing where it can project its happy smile. Would that make sense? Cute drone server waiter. Yeah, kind of like a soup drone. And then these different drones can come with different soups. All right, it's time for manual voting again, I think. Still haven't learned how to create polls, so in the meantime, let's say these are our four contenders. All right. Should we wait? I think I can somehow create polls. But I'm not sure how. I will post my watercolor from yesterday in Discord. I worked on it a bit more. Yes, please, please do. Please do stream your uh, stream share art. Okay, I can't find again the polls polls tool. So let's. Oh wait, I think I can start this one. Yeah. All right. Poll has opened. For which one? Use exclamation mark. Vote. One, two, three, four, to vote. All right, let's give it a minute. I won't tell which one I like the most. What's the last one? This one? Or this one is like a juice maker. This one is soup. This one is like bars. And this one is kind of like protein shake. I think you need to say vote as well. Maybe. Like this. Maybe? Maybe not. <laughs> Let me check. Yeah. So you need a second exclamation mark. All right, so you say number two, I say number four, and let's see what Nervin shared on Discord. Where is it? Hmm. Is it 
this one. Yeah. There you go. Let's see where is your watercolor? Wait, where did it go? Oh, there it is, art. This droplet looks so realistic, especially from afar. It's like you're looking through the window into a misty morning. I really like it. Like if you don't look too close from afar, it's very moody and realistic and amazing. Good job. Keep it up. Vote two. All right, we have two votes for number two. <clears throat> All right, Schmidtcopter, wanna vote? They don't look realistic at all in the sketchbook. Well, <clears throat> you can't fake with a photo of an art piece. Can't really f fake the r the coolness of it. I think. All right. I think we kind of have a winner. All right, let's close the poll. Schmelikopter doesn't have an opinion. Hmm. That's sad, I would say. Because that means it doesn't inspire you at all for any thoughts or ideas but it's okay <laughs> all right let's do <clears throat> a few more iterations on this soup drone can have like a floating hologram so this text can be actually projected in the air which could be cool it can have like a monitor here of some sorts maybe that's where you put your credit card because this drone will only have kind of like one uh, just one meal one dish so you don't really need much of a menu you can just call the the drone that you like nervous says also can recommend that watercolor sketchbook i drowned it in water and it still looks decent forgot now how much water my big brush can hold what is the sketchbook that you can recommend though Helicopter says, sorry, I was just distracted by Olesia singing Blim. <laughs> Blim. <coughs> what? Blimka Lilla Stjarna over and over again. <laughs> and now I don't understand what's happening. Oh, you poor soul. You just got distracted by music. What is, is it that like a children's song in Sweden? Good morning, Traumatech. How is it going? Welcome back.
don't know if cyber if this having these jets is cyberpunky enough. Is it twinkle twinkle little star in Swedish? Blinka blinka lilla stjärna stjärna stjärna. A Hanamulu sketchbook. Get a recommendation from Norway. Alright. Let's see a little bit more some cyberpunk stuff. Because I'm not that. Oops. I'm not that familiar with this style. I haven't drawn anything really in cyberpunk. It should be kind of like punky, so it should be more or less mechanistic, not really jetpacks everywhere. Let's say cyberpunk drone. There was an old riot girl type comic in the 80s and 90s called Tank girl. Let's see. Maybe there are some references here. I mean, it's a dangerous thing to Google on stream, but Blade Runner is very cyberpunk. That's true. All right, so they use rockets everywhere. So rockets are okay. <clears throat> Blade Runner is very cyberpunk, that's true. Maybe they would use propellers more than engines. Like more kind of like this stuff, just energy circles. What if the drone would poop out bubblegum balls as well as a surprise for people who order soup? <laughs> it could. I would think that if a soup drone starts pooping out bubblegum, you probably need to show it to some technician. Uh, there was an old RPG called Shadowrun. Let's see. Shadowrun. Five corporations run, run the world and they are at war. Heavy rain, burning cat tires, <laughs> cat tires, car tires, anarchy, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like alternative universe cyberpunk. That's cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good some good stuff. Have you played Shadowrun, Nervin? Never heard of it. So here can be just this like a shining circle for levitating. That's how I call it. Maybe this soup drone doesn't have these projectors, but instead has like cool glasses. Where he says soup. In its simplest form, it's just combining technology and the 80s punk rockers. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. Kind of like technology and... It's, it's more like a synth wave with punk. 
I kind of like this guy actually. Maybe we'll just work on that one anymore. Don't work on this one, work on that one. I want to have the guides, but not perspective, rather greed because I want to have straight lines which I'm struggling with Nervin says I was about to play it and made a character originally it is a pen and paper RPG like D&D but we never started uh, the campaign was like 70 years ago so <laughs> okay okay it's been a while then I see aren't they re-releasing Shadowrun or something like that or like does the game still exist What is this straight thing doing here? Sorry, I'm old. There is a PC game. Don't be sorry for being born at specific time. It's not like you were planning on that. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe it's time for like a color search. I mean, we do have colors already prepared. Uh, if you're interested, by the way, this uh, color palette is available on our Discord server. I turned 49 this year, still behave like 14 on a good day. Well, plenty of time left to learn. That is true I think they that's kind of one of the problems that people forget how to be child like they because I you know children I feel like they have a lot of things and like they do a lot of things well like they're curious they're not afraid of trying stuff out they're not caught up on you know some stereotypes or whatnot they're open usually so it's kind of like we kind of lose it when we grow up and I think it's important to not lose it and it's yeah it's important to keep that curiosity and openness 
I grew up playing Dungeons and Dragons, the paper and dice RPG. I still play Dungeons and Dragons with paper and dice. I imagine like trauma that you like in Stranger Things playing D and D. Yeah. That's a good image. And the the problem is that it's not like people forget how to be curious and open and not like and express their emotions and all that stuff. But it's also that we as adults sometimes start thinking in like start restricting ourselves in front of ourselves just because you're an adult and you're not supposed to do something which is a very weird concept if you think about it if anything being an adult allows you to make your own decisions <laughs> right and that's kind of the best thing to be in in being an adult you can actually decide what you do This kid asks his mom what she does for a living and she says, I'm an art teacher. I teach adults how to draw. And the kid stares at her for a really long time and says like, you mean they forget? Yeah, that kind of stuff. Like it, it's really sad if you think about it. And then people also get caught up in this thinking like, oh, but I'm 30, 40, 50, I can't do this. Like people in my age don't do that like who cares what people do at what age it it's at the end of the day it's like what you want to do at your age there is like no shoots in life you know this went <laughs> deep all right we need like a hand scanner here, I feel like. To scan your hand. I guess that's how you pay for the soup. And it's like a refill. Everybody has their own flask. And they just refill it with this soup. Hmm. Why not? Let's do some color sketches. Maybe a couple. I feel like a lot of people think life ends at 30. I think at every age you think that life ends in the next decade of your life. Like I kind of remember when I was, I don't know, eight or nine or something like that. I really didn't want to grow up. I was like, fuck like time is going somewhere i can't stop it but i don't want to i really like being a child and having fun <laughs> i don't want to i don't want this to end and i was really upset when i don't know from time to time when the time would just seem to pass quicker than i would like to i would be like damn it stupid time let 
let's mask this one. Yeah, it's like when you're 10, you don't want to get 18 because like it's still fun. But then when you're 18, you're like, oh, and finally I'm an adult, I can do stuff. Whew. And then you're like, oh, but like these people at 27, they're so old, they're already like on their way to the grave. <laughs> and then you get 27, and you're like, huh, actually, it's not that bad. Let's fill it first with some kind of medium color. That's medium, not really. <laughs> That's actually crazy bright. There we go. Fill layer. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's say this one maybe has this screen. Maybe this one is a little darker. And pro maybe it's a tomato soup. Let's say it's simple tomato soup. I uh, had a friend once who I thought turned 30 soon. She screamed at me, how dare I was thinking she turns 30 already. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. Was she turning 29? Turned out ridiculous. I didn't want to bother with this stuff in my life. Yeah, so I don't know. Some people are sensitive about their age. I feel maybe too sensitive, but it's their choice. You get to learn to let them stick to what they want to stick to. What color this thing can be? Um, this soup message, maybe it's like bright yellow. That could be one option, I feel. Let's do another one. Um, does it have like a soup of the day or several soups? Each one of them would have like a soup of the day. So I think it's maybe like a diner drone. So you go there, there is like a coffee drone, soup of the day drone, and uh, yeah, I don't know, like a pomace drone. <laughs> she turned 28, I think, so pretty close. How dare you say I'm two years older than I am? Alright, the second option maybe is like more crazy colored. Don't know if I can make the body of this robot very colorful because it's kind of, I don't know, like metal or plastic. You can also color plastic though. Fish. <laughs> so up. Yeah, I think it's, it's a stupid wordplay that this soup makes you feel better maybe. <laughs> 
futuristic soup. I wonder what it will be. For some reason, I imagine like a very boring looking soup. It's like homogenous, but it tastes like Tom Yum or like Thai soup of some sorts. Maybe the soup is yellow, like mustard soup. Master soup. Drug soup, probably to control the people with antidepressants in it. Yeah, it's just antidepressants, antibiotics, some vitamins, minerals, and you're good to go. The spice must flow. Yeah. Did you see the trailer for the Dune movie? Speaking of spice. I think I will watch the movie, but I'm very skeptical about book adaptations these days, especially these like big cinematic ones. I don't know, I feel like... Oh, you're excited. That's cool. I really like the book and the story and all that stuff, but I'm worried that they'll just ruin it by making it very generic sci-fi story about spaceships maybe I should turn on the reference thing just so we can see all of them at once It can never top the books as long as we go in with realistic expectations. Yeah, it's true. If you don't expect it to be better than books, which I never do <laughs> with movies, I think. But it might be entertaining, and the worm in the um, in the trailer, the sandworm, hmm, he was really impressive. Let's put it this way. I don't think it will be generic, says Traumatage. Everyone is so passionate about it, but a hollow or shallow experience due to the movie format, perhaps. I hope it will be great, but I prepare for disappointment. <laughs> yeah, hope for the best, get ready for the worst. That's, that's kind of the thing nowadays with movies. Yeah, but I'm I'm definitely curious. Would like to watch it when it's out. If the cinemas will be open at the time because these days <laughs> you kinda never know. Hmm. 
let's do one more color variation. I kinda like this subtitle to be green. And maybe the soup inside is very bright. Just like a homogeneous paste, soup paste. What worries me more is that it was written in 1965. Minority Report also in the 50s. Will new masterpieces come out from future generations or is it a lost art? I don't think it's a lost art. I think it just the question is which what which gener <laughs> what which which, which 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 that's the matter. <laughs> Uh, the matter is just what each generation considers a masterpiece. Like, you know, it's kind of the same as saying or wondering, which I am sometimes doing, like, is the music dead? You know, like the overly produced pop music that everybody is listening to corporations training people to listen to specific sort of music just to sell it better all that kind of stuff like will there be any new pink floyds or something like that in the future and sometimes i think that no probably not but that's also not not a problem you know like 300 years ago great composers were doing their masterpieces and their inventions with just piano and some basic orchestra now like i don't know 200 years later we have i don't know pink floyd and beatles and i don't know other good bands fill in <laughs> with your own ideas kind of depends on what you like and the same is now like there are still bands that innovate there are still bands that there are still composers who compose traditional classical music and there are composers who adapt classical music to new technologies and ideas like I don't know, Olafur Arnolds, for example, is an Icelandic composer. I just don't know that many composers. <laughs> so that's why I use him as an example. But he's he's a young guy who is very much into classical music and this kind of old school composing but he's using technology he's using pianos that play alongside him by themselves based on the midi notes that he's sending and all that kind of stuff and it's still great and fun so i think it's just the matter of being open-minded enough to see what's the masterpiece in this generation it's just not going to look the same as it did 50 years ago. Yeah, I feel like with art it's it's kind of the same. There are new art forms emerging, but all art is kind of about more or less about the same about just expressing your 
ideas in some way and then you know first there was theater and books and all that then there was movies even more books maybe there will be some kind of different medium that will blow up our minds in the next 10 years but i agree that right now i feel like the industries like basically a lot of stuff is has to be approved by some business to be to see the world you know like people who produced great arcs art artworks in the past often people would take a chance with them you know like yeah let's just publish this guy who nobody knows and if he in, and it was expensive and dangerous and now people are even more caught up on these business decisions so like if you're if your art isn't sellable from perspective of some businessman it won't see the light of day more most likely or won't get shared with this same amount of um, public you know uh, what also worries me is how odd it must have been to live in the 50s and write something like Minority Report, not in tune with the times. Law. Yeah, this, this kind of stuff really, <laughs> not really worries, but mesmerizes me, you know, like there are some authors who were writing stuff a few decades ahead of their times and you're thinking like, how did they know? Like, how did they, how did they come up with this stuff? All right, guys, let's do another vote, but without voting, <laughs> without poll. Which one do you think? I feel like this one is very cyberpunky. Maybe with tomato soup. Like the the top part from here, the bottom part from here. These soup machines are very cyberpunk. Thank you. That's good to hear because I'm <laughs> uh, kind of lost in cyberpunk a little bit I know that if you use bright colors it's helping I'm thinking about making kind of one more detailed and then adding like if if this is the page then to have like one main and then maybe like a few on the background with other soups all right if you cannot decide I'll have to decide myself which at the end of the day makes sense Let's hide these guys. Let's get this thing. Maybe let's try to take this bottom part. Nah, maybe let's try to this one.
I like the <laughs> wait. I like the bottom of one and the top of two, but with red soup. I think it should have a neon soup sign. You could make a gif with it blinking. <laughs> blink a blink a little soup bot. <laughs> maybe it will have maybe it will have the neon sign. Let's see. That onion, hello, welcome to the stream and good morning. We're drawing. <laughs> How he diddling, you beautiful ladies. Uh, is it a pirate accent? I, see, I feel pirate accent. We're doing, I mean, I don't know how others are doing, but I'm doing well. Overslept today a little bit, but now we're drawing some vending machines from the future. And it's going fine. It's kind of cyberpunky. Have nice discussions here. Is this soup vending machine? Didn't we dis discuss this last time? Yeah, we did. It's wait. Let me show you the whole process real quick. First, we did <clears throat> some reference searches and some brainstorming what the machines can sell. And then did some sketches with some different ideas. And as you can see, the bottom of oh, the second one, the soup drone one, and it's kind of like a soup drone for the diner you have there only one soup you have there like another drone for coffee and a third drone for toasts or something like that at least that's the the idea and the topic as you remember from last time is from uh and freelance i think concept art artist <laughs> concept artist that's the thing Trent Kanyuga who posts these challenges every month you know I just had a greedy idea uh oh uh oh <laughs> What's the gritty idea? Also, if you want to join along, we have the colors in Discord, I think. You know how they make those bag kind of juice boxes for kids these days? What if 
you could order a vending machine heat up soup in one of those wait what's a bag bag juice box is it like this kind of thing is this the bag juice box <laughs> uh, you could order a vending machine heat up soup in one of those then you get the hot bag of soup with a straw out of it then you grab some paper around it like eating a <laughs> too hot hot dog hmm so instead of a nozzle here <clears throat> you would have like a tray with this thing falling out with a holder hmm that's a good idea let's see first of all I'm still not sure how this top part of the soup container looks like but that's good thinking with these juice boxes Also, how is it going, Onion? How's life treating you? And how is the grip print for the pencil? Traumatic said, Trent uh, made so many awesome designs for one of my favorite expansions of all time, Wrath of the Lich King. Didn't know he was also doing sci-fi, mainly seen his fantasy stuff. He's, I think he is doing mainly fantasy stuff, as, as you said, but with his challenges, he well first he is very talented, right? <laughs> he, I bet he can draw anything like any style you want him to draw. But um, for these challenges, they're just coming up with random fun ideas because there was another challenge for uh, Darksiders universe another challenge for Breath of the Wild Zelda so it's kind of like all over the place this time it's sci-fi I got sick this week oh no test came out negative though so that's good bit tired still take care of yourself buddy but negative test is good. Are you gonna do the second one in a week or something or in a few days? Or what's the process there in Finland? just like a hello here I think don't know how well the holographic projection holographic projections work in the future but in my case it's just gonna be this He makes it look so effortless and now it's an illusion. I bet it is for him effortless. <laughs> Just because he's been doing it for so much time. And I, I don't know, I feel like if you know what you're doing and you like it it's not really an, like an effort you're just spending some time <laughs> yep 
Yeah, so I can get tested with very short notice, results come in a few days. But even though I don't have it, I should self-quarantine because my defenses are low with some other flu already. At least one healthy day in quarantine and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you need to leave the house or are you comfortable with self-quarantining? Because I'm okay with self-quarantining. <laughs> don't mind it. Didn't need to, but... Like, we don't need to go to the offices these days, right now at least. Okay, maybe then here we can have like a hole where you can grab your hot soup. How about that? Get well soon, that onion, a swift recovery to you. Yeah, indeed. It's gonna... It's important to stay healthy these days. But also, do you eat, do you eat, do you eat, do you eat vitamin D? I heard it's really good for kind of helping your immune system not get sick with coronavirus at least not sure if this makes sense do you do you understand what it mean, what I mean with this don't think so. I think it's a very unclear message. I don't do a lot of vitamin D generally, but I'm trying to do it now. Not only because of COVID, the Wiffins should eat vitamin D during winter time for lack of sun. Yeah, we kind of almost all should do that in Europe. I guess only people who live in Mediterranean don't really need to care about that. But I think Northern Europe, like Germany as well, Netherlands, probably all the same. Okay. And then here inside will be this soup pack. Maybe it should be vertical because you need to grab it. Let's do it vertical. Zoop. We're still in this concept phase I, f <laughs> I think I wanted to do it more already like a refined sketch but it seems like it's still changing quite a bit which I guess is okay
when you're designing some concepts. And whoever will also or is also drawing a cyberpunk vending machine, you can probably post it as well to them. Trent Canuga's channel on Discord. Oh, it will say here hot contents, I think. Something like this. this maybe I feel like the shape is not that cyberpunky not as cyberpunky as I would like it to be but I don't really know what to do to fix it Does it need some tubes? Or maybe some buttons? It reads a little Doctor Who. That means it's probably close. There is some doc Doctor Who-ness about it. it. Like I feel this looks like um, a little bit kind of vintage. You know, like there are these old mint boxes. With this kind of like typographic thing. I think there were two kinds of futuristic either everything is sp spherical and white or it's box in metallic yeah true but we're sticking to cyberpunk so we can make it um spherical and colorful I like what cyberpunk theme is doing with neon lights though. What is it doing with it? I think cyberpunk is very influenced by Japanese culture. So, and like modern Japanese. So it should be very angular and, but at the same time, fluid, kind of like very organic. Yeah, maybe the key to making it look even more cyberpunky is to imagine if it would be designed in Japan. <laughs> 
Terminator meets Hello Kitty. Yeah, kind of like that. A hint of Goofy. Japanese don't seem to be scared to try silly design. Yeah, that's true. They're all up for that. I feel like it needs more like angular stuff. Maybe this can be like a more of a neon sign here. With some symbols that kind of mimic the shape of hieroglyphs. I feel like this this gives more of a s cyberpunk vibe. Oh, that's not a selection. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I think this sign instead of hologram would be better. It's, it's getting cyberpunk here now. Because this um this ads they always add like punkiness and more like shabbiness. We can also actually move this hand scanner maybe a little bit. What if we like scale it down a little bit? Hmm. Now we can actually work on this bow a little bit better without it being hidden. It's kind of empty now though maybe it needs like a I don't know a temperature slider <laughs> or something like that so you can select how hot you want your soup I don't know what, what to draw next time. Is it gonna be December already? No, we still have one stream in November. Hmm. We'll figure something out, but if you have any suggestions or things you would like to be drawing along, nuclear hot tomato soup, kinda yeah.
maybe that should say it like caution nuclear hot tomato soup Still unsatisfied with this hand thing. Let's move it again. Maybe this thing should also be green, this hand scanner screen. Selection for hotness. Maybe this should be also like grayer because it's metallic. Nuka soup. Uh, as for suggestions, I'm not sure. Maybe explore this cyberpunk a little more. This is fun. Plus, it's super trendy right now. Yeah, we can do that. Don't think the trendiness affects as much. But if somebody wants to post some stuff, on Instagram with cyberpunk hashtags that makes sense let's see I don't mind digging deep into this style and just coming up with random topic and just do it in cyberpunk style it's fun to try out the color palettes that I normally don't use and see how it actually performs. Don't know how hands work. But maybe the person who was designing this robot also doesn't know how hands work, so it's all good. Not sure what this is though. <laughs> it was supposed to be like a slider for soup for hotness, but it looks weird. Maybe the slider is like a 
hole inside and there is like a lever that you can pull something like this maybe let's put the shadow from this thing kinda like that and then it can have like very hot medium hot something like this I think we're kind of close to finishing up this. I will just add some neon glow underneath it, I think, to indicate the, the jets that are underneath. something like this let's remove some of this stuff all right that feels like it's maybe a little bit floating. Which is good. All right, something like this. I will probably work on it a little bit more. But for today, I feel like my hand is getting tired now, so I would need to take a break. But I feel like we're on a good track. I really like how colors work together, actually. I am surprised myself. <laughs> I astound myself. Anyway. Thanks everyone for the company and great ideas be sure to post your vending machines everywhere if you want to and remember everything will be fine <laughs> oh hey hawks thanks for lurking around all right have a good day guys, have a nice week and I will see you all next Sunday. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Everything will be... It's gonna be alright.